Greek mythology is not only beautiful gods, there are dozens of horrible creatures, disgusting beings and beasts that tormented the Greeks of the time. In this video, we are going to meet the scariest monsters in Greek mythology. Have you ever wondered where I get the incredible soundtracks, captivating sound effects, and stunning visuals that appear in my videos? The answer is Envato. This extraordinary resource is a real treasure for content creators like us. Envato distinguishes itself by its all-in-one. Not only is it a platform where you can find music, images, and videos, but it also offers templates, special effects, and art to boost your channel's presence. What I like the most about Envato is its versatility. Whether you're a video creation beginner or a seasoned veteran, it's the place for you. So if you're ready to take your content to the next level, I encourage you to give Envato a try. You will find the link in the description. And remember, by clicking on the link, you will not only be raising the quality of your creations, you will also be supporting this channel. You complete me. I love you. Come on, jump over to Envato, and together we'll make our content truly amazing. Number 1. Typhon Typhon was known as the father of all monsters. He was born from Gaia, Earth, and Tartarus, the depths of hell. He was said to have been the fiercest creature to ever roam the earth. Typhon was huge. It was said that when he stood up, his head brushed against the stars. The lower half of his body consisted of two coiled viper tails that constantly hissed. Instead of fingers, several dragon heads emerged from his hands. It was said that he had wings that, when extended, could block out the sun. Fire flashed in his eyes, striking fear into the heart of any living creature, even mighty Olympians. Typhon was so powerful that the only conceivable opponent to challenge him was Zeus himself. While the other Olympians ran in fear, Zeus stood his ground against the monstrous being. A great battle between Typhon and Zeus ensued, causing countless earthquakes and tsunamis. The war between Typhon and Zeus was so powerful that it threatened to split the planet in two. Zeus would triumph over Typhon. By shooting a hundred well-aimed bolts at the monster's head, Typhon was hurled into the depths of Tartarus, where he was sealed forever. However, this monster's anger could not be contained. While he was trapped underground, he would occasionally experience fits of rage, his furry would manifest in the form of volcanic eruptions, and in this way, Typhon continues to terrorize humanity from his earthly prison. Number 2. Echidna, the mother of monsters. Echidna was half a winged woman with glowing eyes and half a huge scaly serpent. She had the face of a seductive woman and the body of a reptile. She was immortal, and she used to drag her victims into earth-shattered pits where she liked to devour them alive. She lived in a cave, deep in the earth. In Greek mythology, Echidna gave birth to many famous monsters that we find in Greek myths. As mentioned above, her partner was the monster Typhon. After her defeat by the Olympians and banishment by Typhon, Echidna and her offspring lived to challenge future heroes. Number 3. The Gorgons The Gorgons were three mortal sisters whose hair was made of live, venomous snakes and could turn anyone to stone just by looking into their eyes. Famous sisters were Stheno, Uriele, and Medusa. Medusa is definitely the most famous and notorious among her kind. Medusa remains a popular monster from ancient mythology. Interpretations of Medusa differ. Some accounts describe how Medusa was born from the archaic marine deity, Sito. In this version of the tale, Medusa is born with a hideous face and a serpentine tail where her legs should be. In Ovid's Metamorphoses, Medusa is said to have once been a beautiful maiden who was transformed into a hideous monster after being raped in the temple of Athena by the sea god Poseidon. The only aspect of Medusa that remains constant through various legends is her hair, which is said to have been composed of writhing venomous snakes. Medusa confronts the hero Perseus, who was asked by her stepfather to retrieve the monster's head. Using a mirrored shield given to him by Athena, Perseus saw Medusa's reflection so as not to look directly at the monster. Perseus kills Medusa and cuts off her head. Perseus would use Medusa's head as a weapon against enemies until he finally presented it to Athena, who placed it on the front of her shield. Number 4. Mermaids 
the dangerous and beautiful creatures of Greek mythology. They were often depicted as femme fatales who lured nearby sailors with their enchanting voices to shipwreck on the rocky shore of their island. They used their singing to lure sailors passing through their island and kill them. They were considered the daughters of the river god Achilles. Roman writers associated sirens more closely with the sea, as daughters of Phorcys. Mermaids are found in many Greek stories, particularly Homer's Odyssey. The great hero Ulysses, cunning as he was, sealed the ears of his sailors with wax and tied himself to the mast of his ship to enjoy the beautiful song of the sirens without being tempted to follow the seductive sirens. Number 5. Scylla. According to Greek mythology, Scylla was the daughter of Forky and Ketos, once a beautiful nymph longed for by the god Poseidon. The jealous Aphrodite, partner of Poseidon, turned her into a monster, poisoning her bathwater. She had a fish body, a female upper torso, and dog heads that protruded from her neck. She was chasing the rocks of a narrow strait in front of the whirlpool of another terrible monster, Charybdis, which we will see later. In Odyssey, Odysseus's ship passes through the strait after losing six of his men to being eaten alive by the monster. Number 6. Charybdis. Charybdis is another scary female monster in Greek mythology. She lived opposite Scylla, on the Asian shore of the Bosphorus, a narrow natural strait and continental boundary between Europe and Asia. Charybdis looked like a huge whirlpool, and at the bottom of it, its monstrous mouth with huge, sharp teeth was waiting to devour any ship and sailors on it. Like Scylla, Charybdis is also involved in the myths of Odysseus and the Argonauts, who crossed these straits with some losses. Charybdis was once a beautiful nymph daughter of Poseidon and Gaia. According to myth, she flooded much of the earth to expand her father's kingdom and return with him. This angered his uncle Zeus, who turned her into a monster and banished her to the sea. Charybdis became one of the most fearsome sea monsters. She used to swallow large amounts of water a day, creating whirlpools and devouring the sailors. Number 7. Empusa. Unlike the other creatures on this list, the Empusa is perhaps little known and does not appear in any traditional epics or folk legends. However, her terrifying appearance and her terrifying tendency to feast on blood and human flesh more than warrant her place on our list. The Empusa is often depicted as a beautiful woman who transforms into a creature with sharp teeth, flaming hair, and bat-like wings. Empusa was said to be a demigoddess under the control of the goddess Hecate, a being often associated with crossroads and driveways. The Empusa often seduced young people traveling alone. Once the unsuspecting youth was fast asleep, the creature would shift into her hideous form and devour the boy's flesh and drink his blood for his sustenance. The Empusa is probably best known for her appearance in Aristophanes' The Frogs, where she terrorizes the god Dionysus while traveling to the underworld. Number 8. Harpies. The harpies were anthropomorphic monsters in Greek mythology with the body of a bird and the head of a woman. They nailed the souls of the people and handed over lawbreakers to the Erinyes or Furies, the three goddesses of revenge and retribution who punished men for crimes against the natural order. When a person suddenly disappeared from Earth, it was said that they had been taken by harpies to the underworld, the kingdom of Hades, and the dead. They were punishment agents who kidnapped people and tortured them on their way to the underworld. They were vicious, cruel, and violent. Number 9. Lamia. Lamia was a beautiful queen who ruled Libya. She fell to Hera's disadvantage because of her relationship with Zeus. The thunder god loved her because she was beautiful and had children with her who were killed by Hera. Due to her sadness and madness, Lamia transformed into a child-eating monster. Since then, she snatches the children of other mothers out of envy. Number 10. Sphinx. The Sphinx, a monster said to have the body of a lion, the head of a woman, and the wings of an eagle. It is a treacherous and ruthless monster that kills and eats those who cannot answer its riddle. This Sphinx would stop passers-by in the Greek city of Thebes and ask them to answer her riddle, otherwise she would eat them. The Sphinx is perhaps best known for its role in the Oedipus legend. The story goes that while Oedipus was traveling on the road to Thebes, he was confronted by the mysterious creature. The Sphinx blocks Oedipus's path and confronts him with a riddle. Although the exact riddle is not mentioned in ancient Greek legend, the popular version of the story tells that the Sphinx poses the following riddle to the young traveler. Who is the being 
the only being among all the inhabitants of the earth, waters and air, which has a only nature. But it has four feet, two feet and three feet, and it is weaker the more feet it has. Oedipus correctly answers the riddle. The man, who crawls on all fours as a child, on two as an adult and with the help of a cane on three legs during the twilight of his life, having been outplayed at her own game, the Sphinx throws herself off a high cliff. In some versions, the Sphinx devours itself in anger and frustration. If Oedipus had not answered the riddle correctly, he would have been strangled and eaten by the creature, which had been the fate of so many travelers before him. Number 11. Manticore. The Manticore is very similar to its sister monster, the Sphinx. He has a human head, a lion's body and wings, bat wings instead of eagle wings, but still, what it lacks in puzzles, it makes up for with a scorpion tail that can shoot poisonous spikes at people, just like a boss in some kind of ancient Greek video game. The scariest thing is that Manticore had three rows of teeth in its human mouth, which frankly disturbs me even when it comes to narrating. If this creature's also creep you out, give me a like and write me in the comments. It's a great help to me. <laughs> Number 12. Giants. The giants were beings of enormous size. According to Greek mythology, they were human-like but tall in stature and irresistible in strength. Their bodies were scaly and ended in a lizard tail. They had thick hair and a long beard. Although they were of divine origin, they were mortal. Following other stories, the giants were immortal as long as they walked on the land where they were born. They are considered to have superhuman powers, enormous size and long life, while on the contrary, they lack ethics and imagination. A famous giant was Argus, who served as Hera's guard. Number 13. Chimera. The Chimera was a ferocious, fire-breathing monstrosity possessing the body and head of a lion with the head of a goat protruding from its back and a serpent for a tail. The brief description of the Chimera in the text of the Iliad is the earliest surviving record of the creature. Traditionally, the Chimera is considered to be a woman, and she is said to have given birth to the Sphinx and the Nemean lion. The monster was feared and believed to be a harbinger of storms, shipwrecks, and other natural disasters. The Chimera is best known for her role in the legend of Bellerophon, a hero born in the city of Corinth. King Lobates of Lycia would order Bellerophon to kill the monster to atone for his past sins. Bellerophon, knowing that he would need help for such a task, prayed and then slept in Athena's temple. Upon awakening, he saw the goddess in front of him, leading the mythical horse Pegasus, who possessed the ability to fly. With Pegasus saddled, Bellerophon flew to the Chimera's lair in Lycia. Knowing that the creature was fierce and would not be easily defeated, Bellerophon devised a plan. He tied a large piece of lead to the end of his spear. Mounted on Pegasus, he flew towards the monster. Just as the Chimera opened its mouth to burn the hero with fire, Bellerophon plunged lead into the creature's mouth. The Chimera's fiery breath melted the lead, causing the creature to suffocate to death. Number 14. Lernaean Hydra. The Lernaean Hydra was another daughter of Typhon and Echidna, a hideous sea monster with serpentine features and many, many serpentine heads, a snake-like aquatic monster with reptilian features, a creature whose poison was so dangerous that even the breath exhaled by the Hydra could be fatal to any man. Furthermore, the Hydra had the unnerving ability to regrow decapitated limbs at an alarming rate. It was said that for every head she cut off, two more would grow in her place. Her lair was Lake Lerna in an ancient part of the Peloponnese. The Hydra would hide in an underwater cave that was said to be an entrance to the underworld. The Hydra is known to be the second monster that Heracles encounters during his twelve labors. Before attacking the Hydra, Heracles covers his mouth and nose with a cloth to keep himself safe from the deadly toxins the monster emits from its many mouths. Heracles originally attacks the Hydra with a sickle, sword, or her trademark club. However, the hero quickly realizes that for every decapitated head, the creature quickly grows two more. The battle would seem hopeless. Heracles then devises a plan to turn the tide against the monster. As soon as the hero decapitates one of the Hydra's heads, he immediately carries a torch to the stump of her neck. The wound is cauterized, and the creature cannot produce any more menacing heads. Heracles finally releases the final head of the Hydra, effectively killing the creature and completing his second task. Number 15. Mares of Diomedes. The Mares of Diomedes, also called Mares of Thrace, were a herd of man-eating horses in Greek mythology, 
Belonging to the giant Diomedes, Diomedes was one of the bloodiest and most feared kings. He was the son of Ares, the god of war, and as he was the living personification of brutality, violence, tumult, and confusion, he lived on the shore of the Black Sea, from where he ruled the warrior tribe of the Bistons. But their most precious asset, their great treasure, were four wild mares that they cared for as if they were their daughters. The mares, which were the terror of the Thracian region, were kept tied with iron chains to a bronze manger and were called Podargos, the swift one, Lampon, the bright one, Xanthos, the yellow one, and Danos, the terrible one. Heracles defeated these monsters in the eighth labor of him and fed the mares with Diomedes, his own master. Number 16. Cerberus. Cerberus is a popular creature in ancient mythology. Hades' loyal watchdog, Cerberus, was a massive three-headed hound that guarded the entrance to the underworld. The beast was said to only have an appetite for living flesh and would therefore only allow departed spirits through while consuming any living mortal foolish enough to come near it. It is said that the three heads were meant to symbolize the past, present, and future. In other versions of the myth, the three heads represent youth, adulthood, and old age. While Cerberus was a remarkable creature of mythology, he is probably best remembered as the twelfth and final labor that Heracles most often performed. Heracles must enter the underworld, fight the beast without using weapons, and then bring Cerberus to the surface world, alive, to present him to the Mycenaean king Eurystheus, the man who originally ordered Heracles to perform these tasks as a reward for his sins. Heracles manages to board the beast. Then, using his great strength, he throws the animal over his shoulder and drags it into the mortal world. It is said that upon seeing Cerberus, Eurystheus was so terrified that he hid himself in a large vase and begged Heracles to return the hellhound to Hades. Number 17. Nemean Lion The Nemean Lion was the same as the Hydra, son of Typhoon and Echidna. His claws were sharper than any deadly sword, and his glowing skin was impenetrable armor. He also had great strength. This monster lived in the lands of Argolid, near the Nemean Hills. Legend has it that he kidnapped defenseless women and took them to his cave, attracting the knights who dared to rescue them. It is said that when they arrived at their cave, they saw an injured woman, and when she approached, she transformed into a lion who killed them and offered their bones to Hades. This beast was finally slain by Heracles in his first of the twelve labors. Since then, the great hero has worn the lion's skin as a helmet. Number 18. Stymphalian birds. Stymphalian birds are man-eating birds with bronze beaks, sharp metallic feathers that can hurl poisonous dung at their victims. According to Greek mythology, these flying creatures were raised by the god of war, Ares, or were pets of the goddess of the hunt, Artemis. They reproduced rapidly and swarmed across the countryside, destroying crops and terrorizing people. Heracles defeated these creatures in the sixth labor of him shooting arrows tipped with poisonous blood from the slain monster, Lernaean Hydra. Birds that attack people are generally considered scary on their own, but these birds very specifically liked to eat people, which is terrifying. However, the real problem is that the bird's feathers were made of bronze, razor sharp, and could be shot at people. These weren't birds to scare away, unless you also wanted your hand to be crushed into confetti of bloody meat. Number 19. Arimanthian Boar In Greek mythology, the Arimanthian Boar was a mythical creature that took the form of a furry, untamed boar with great weight and foam-filled jaws. He would emerge from the thick, cypress-clad heights of Arimanthus to haunt the groves of Arcady and abuse the land of Sophus. Heracles was once again the hero to defeat this monster also in his fourth labor. In order to capture the boar, Heracles first chased after it with shouts and then led the exhausted creature into the deep snow. He then caught him and tied him up with chains. Number 20. Minotaur The Minotaur is one of the most fascinating monsters in Greek mythology. With the body of a man and the head of a bull, his name means Bull of Minos. He was the son of Pasiphae and the Cretan bull. Minos, son of Zeus, asked Poseidon for help so that his people would make him king of Crete after the death of Asterion. Poseidon agreed and brought back from the seas a beautiful white bull, which Minos promised to sacrifice in his name. But Minos was amazed by the beauty of the bull and sacrificed a different one in its place, hoping to trick Poseidon. This enraged Poseidon, 
and in revenge he awakened desire in Pasiphae, wife of Minos, telling her to have a son with the white bull, which resulted in the Minotaur. The Minotaur became violent as he got older, so Minos built a labyrinth and locked the Minotaur in it. The Minotaur is best remembered for his affinity for devouring flesh and his cryptic home, deep within the confines of the twisting labyrinth. The labyrinth was an impossible place built by the inventor Daedalus. It is said to have been located under the palace of Knossos, the home of King Minos of Crete. The story goes that King Minos, the ruler of Crete, lost his son Androgeus when the boy was murdered in Athens. Accounts vary, but one version says that the prince was assassinated because the Athenians were jealous of his many victories at the recent Panathenaic Games in Athens. Subsequently, King Minos would wage war on the Athenians and finally find victory. As penance for the murder of Androgeus, every year the Athenians were forced to send seven young men and seven maidens to the island of Crete, where they would be released into the labyrinth and systematically hunted down and eaten by the Minotaur. It is at this time that Theseus, the hero of Athens, volunteers to be sent to Crete as a sacrifice to the monster. Upon arrival, Theseus is helped by Ariadne, the daughter of King Minos. Before the Athenians can be trapped inside the labyrinth, Ariadne frees Theseus from her holding cell and leads him to the entrance of the Great Labyrinth. Theseus ventures into the labyrinth and discovers the Minotaur sleeping in the center of the Great Dungeon. Using the element of surprise, Theseus attacks the Minotaur and dispenses with the monster with ease. The hero and the other Athenians, along with Princess Ariadne, escape Minos's palace and quickly retreat to Athens under cover of night. Number 21. Python. He was born by Gaia from the mud of Deucalion's deluge, with which Zeus ended the Golden Age. It was a dragon or snake of impressive size that guarded the Oracle of Delphi. He died after an epic fight against Apollo, who for this took possession of the Oracle and gave the priestess the name of Pythia. Among the reasons for the death of Python at the hands of Apollo, we must also consider a possible revenge of Apollo towards the snake, which before the birth of the god, followed the mother of Apollo to the island of Delos. Number 22. The Dragon of Colchis The Colchia dragon in Greek mythology was a giant fire-breathing serpent that guarded the Golden Fleece. The Golden Fleece was the prize sought by the Greek hero Jason and his crew of Argonauts. With the help of the witch Medea, Jason managed to defeat the guardian monster and take the fleece. The witch put him to sleep, and the hero left him alone or killed him. Dragons were common creatures in Greek mythology. In addition to the Colchian dragon and python, Another famous monster was Leiden. This creature was a serpentine dragon that coiled and twisted around the tree in the Garden of the Hesperides, protecting the golden apples. According to one version of the myth, Heracles killed the monster with a bow and arrow when he came to collect the golden apples in his eleventh labor. Number 23. Pegasus. A beautiful white horse with large wings. It was the horse of Zeus and was born from the blood of Medusa when Perseus cut off her head. Pegasus is a noble and intelligent horse, and he does not allow himself to be ridden by just anyone. Only those with a good heart can ride Pegasus, as he is able to sense the evil that lurks behind people's intentions. Pegasus is one of the creatures from Greek mythology that has been widely featured in film and television, becoming a symbol of honor in many stories. Number 24. Griffin. This mythological creature takes the hybrid form of an eagle and a lion, combining its meanings fierce and brave into one being. They usually roamed in packs and were difficult to tame. However, the demigods were able to tame them, and under them, they became loyal. They feed on the meat of horses. A myth tells the story of Apollo, who went in search of griffins and returned to Greece mounted on a hydra. The hydra took care of him and watched over his treasures. Number 25. The Cyclops. The Cyclopes were primordial giants that were said to have been born from Gaia, the Earth. They were said to possess great strength and ferocity, with a bulging eye protruding from their forehead. Fearing his power, the Cyclops were thrown into the pits of Tartarus by their father Urano. The monsters remained imprisoned when the titan Cronus overthrew Uranus and took his place as ruler of the universe. It was only when the Olympians rose to power that the Cyclops found freedom. The mighty Zeus unleashed the monsters, who in turn would make lightning bolts for the young Olympian. Perhaps the most famous story involving a Cyclops involves Odysseus and his woeful journeys. 
In Book 9 of the Odyssey, Odysseus and his crew find themselves trapped in the cave of the mighty Cyclops Polyphemus. The monster blocks his escape and devours the flesh of its captives day after day. Known for his cunning, Odysseus devises a plan to escape. Odysseus offers Polyphemus the wine that the traveler brought from his ship. The Cyclops turns himself in and is soon very drunk. Feeling joyful, Polyphemus the monster asks the man his name. Odysseus replies that his name is No One. When Polyphemus falls asleep from intoxication, Odysseus and his men blind the Cyclops by stabbing him in the eye with a sharp staff. Polyphemus, now enraged, yells at the other Cyclops on the island that nobody has blinded him. Odysseus and his men escape from the monster's cave by joining the underbelly of the numerous sheep that Polyphemus herds. Now completely blind, the monster feels the animal's backs as they go out to graze. The Cyclops is unaware that his captives are escaping silently, hiding under his herd. As Odysseus sails away, he boasts to the defeated monster, who in turn attempts to sink the man's ship by throwing rocks off a high cliff. Number 26. Centaur. A centaur is a creature that is half man and half horse. Centaurs have the head, arms, and torso of a man and the body and legs of a horse. The centaurs lived in the mountains of Thessaly along with the Lapitas, with whom they maintained a constant war because the centaurs wanted to kidnap Hippodamia, the beautiful wife of King Piratu. King Pirithaus celebrated his wedding with a great banquet and invited all the inhabitants of the region, including the centaurs. But the centaurs had never tasted wine. So when they got drunk, they wanted to kidnap Hippodamia, as well as other banquet attendees. This event later resulted in a war that was won by the Lapitas. I know that I have said that there would be 26 creatures in this top, but we are going to see one more. If you have come this far, I imagine that you will have liked the video. Give it a like, comment to suggest new videos, or to say what you think of this one. Subscribe and activate notifications. For me, it is a great help. Number 27 the Furies. When the titan Kronos castrated his father Urano and threw his penis into the sea, as is done, the drops of blood that fell to the ground became the Furies. Having been born of blood from severed genitalia, it was reasonable to expect that the Furies were not in a good mood. They spent their time finding the people who had done wrong and tormenting them to a horrifying death, mainly by lashing them repeatedly with their flails. It's true that the Furies are more goddesses than monsters, but since many stories describe them as having the heads of dogs, snakes for hair, hind wings, and coal-black bodies, I was willing to make an exception. The Arinyes are primitive forces prior to the Olympian gods, so they do not submit to the authority of Zeus. They lived in Erebus, or in Tartarus according to other traditions, from which they only returned to Earth to punish living criminals. During their stay in the underworld, they subjected the eternally condemned to endless torture. Despite their divine ancestry, the gods of Olympus show a deep revulsion mixed with awe towards these beings and do not tolerate them. For their part, mortals fear them terribly and flee from them.